Hi, this is Mike89, and I've just made this little um, primer for Sonic 2, uh, just designed to help people out um, who are taking part in the Get Yourself Speedrunning race on Speedruns Live this weekend. Um, one of the things that separates this game from the other two games, Mario 3 and Link to the Past, that uh, Speedruns Live have used in their other Get Yourself Speedrunning races, um, in those two, the, they provided a route to follow along with. Um, in Sonic 2 you don't really have route issues per se, it's linear level progression so you basically just keep going forwards and you'll eventually get to where you need to go. So what this is instead, this is more um, this is more having a couple of um, the more difficult parts of the game kind of explained so that um, people don't just give up on them. Uh, yeah, ideally I want to see as many people finish as possible. Um, generally speaking, the game's not too hard. Most of the time you can always either roll or jump to protect yourself from anything, and even if you do get hit, you can almost always recover yourself to a safe position uh, just by picking up a ring. Um, yeah, there's very few things that will straight up kill you. There is the final boss, but um, that's obviously one of the things I'm going to cover. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, Chemical Plant 2. Now if you've played this before you may remember this section where you have to climb up through all of this. Now most people get a, a bit scared here and they panic and they end up drowning. Now it turns out that the easiest thing to do is just stick to the right hand side because all of the platforms rotate in the same way and when you get up to these single ones they rotate in pairs. Um, also, as you can see, Tails lags the game like crazy. <laughs> so there's so there's that. But if you don't want to do that, um, so I've started here back from the kind of midway point of the stage, if you like. So you go through this loop and up here, um, and if you do this jump here, so through these two loops, and then there's a then there's a ramp here, and if you jump from the highest point of the ramp like this. Um, you can actually skip that entire section. So that's, um, so that's one way of making that section easier, but obviously the other method uh, works just fine as well. Um, next we're going to go to Casino Night 2. Uh, this is, a, this tends to be a little bit of a tricky boss for people, um, but the easiest way to get hits is just, well, as you can see it's not foolproof, but you want to um, you want to not use the flippers. You want to just um, spin Nash up the side and then jump into the boss that way. And you're miles away from any of its attacks. It's completely safe to do it this way. So that's um, that's probably the most difficult boss, at least until Metropolis 3, which we'll jump out to now. So um, there's a couple of different ways of doing this, and this one. Um, this way I'm going to be getting one hit at a time. So you notice the balls that fly around this boss, they um, they kind of have a plane to them so that it'll open up either the left or the right hand side to be hit. So you can see that I'm waiting for that plane to be from the top left to the bottom right. And okay so now on that side you can see it works from both sides. Uh, so you want to have all the balls like in a plane from top right to bottom left so that um, that bottom right section is vulnerable and you get in that way. Uh, now the next one you're going to see is the same boss again but a, different, uh, a slightly different way of approaching it. So this time we're going to get two hits at a time and what you do is you deliberately take hits and then get two hits on the way up like that. Now this is a bit quicker, but it's obviously a bit riskier, but there is something about the rings that's really important. So right now I've only got one ring, and when you've got one ring, it always flies to the left. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to stand kind of on the left edge and make sure that I get knocked back to the left so I can pick it up right away. Um, here it doesn't matter because there's only two hits left to get, but I'm going to show you again anyway. Um, okay, so that's... Uh, so that's a couple of neat ways to do Metropolis 3. Um, you will also notice as this clip finishes 
that um, if you do leave one of these left behind at the end, uh, it can still hit you. So if you've got no rings, make sure you don't do that. Um, Wing Fortress is another boss some people struggle with. Um, this is a pretty simple way of taking care of it, just to stick to the sides. So uh, generally you're able to get two hits at a time, and then uh, I think I get three here. But then straight away just go to the other side, and that will ensure that the laser always moves back to the other side. And I messed this up a little bit, but I only have one hit to go, so just like, why not go for it? Um, Finally, we have the Death Egg boss, which I suspect is going to be a big cause of um, resets. So, uh, resets and quits. So, there's three different ways that I've um, that I've shown here in this video. Uh, the first one is the one that people who are new to the game will probably do first, and that is you just get one hit at a time. You stay to the edges. Um, as it targets you, and then you jump and get one hit as it comes down. Now, um, this will beat the boss eventually, but it'll also take about four minutes. So, um, so it's up to you if you want to do it this way. But if we skip ahead here, um, there is actually a risk of something very unfortunate happening. So, so sometimes when you go for a hit there. Uh, you'll just go straight through the boss like that. Uh, we don't know why that happens, but it does. So, I don't recommend that. So I recommend doing one of these instead. So, uh, there's two different ways you can attack this boss, from the front or from the back. So this one's from the front. Um, you can pretty much always get over that, but you just have to time it so that the height of your jump is when you, um, is when you get to the boss. Um, okay, so... That's another cool thing you can do. That you can spin dash there for two hits, and that's completely safe. Um, so this should only take. Uh, this should be the last round here. So that's actually 11 hits, and then you just get one more, and that's it. You're done. Um, the next method you're going to see is much riskier. Uh, you attack from the back. Um, so you get two hits here before it moves, and then wait until that flame's out of the way and jump over the back of it like that, um, and then stop there and get three hits like that before the boss goes up. Uh, now, so you've got nine so far, and you can just get three from under here before the boss does its next attack. Uh, so that is all of the things I wanted to cover. Um, just for this particular event. Uh, if you are interested after the race in um, uh, exploring the game in more detail, uh, Timps has an excellent tutorial and uh, he and I have also written a page on the SDA knowledge base um, explaining some of the more detailed strategies about the game. Um, I'm going to provide links to those in the description so make sure you check that out. And good luck this weekend!